Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to another tutorial let's play of Sid Meier's Civilization V. We're playing as England, or Elizabeth of England, and uh, we're still mostly in the early phases of exploring around. Of course, our, we're going relatively slow because I'm spending so much time explaining the basics, but I think we probably start accelerating things relatively quickly here. I'm going to spend more turns where I'm not explaining every little movement that I'm playing on the board, but other than that, we're going to keep going relatively tutorial style. Uh, there's another Ancient Ruins over here, so we're going to want to grab those right away. Ah, very cool! Our scout has equipped itself with advanced weapons. So the scout has automatically upgraded itself to an archer, which is really cool. And unlike normal archers, it still has its scout bonus of ignoring terrain costs. So this is going to be a very fast-moving archer, and it's a really, really cool thing to have. Don't mind that one bit. Uh, we could keep exploring this area down here, but I'm thinking... We might go and help our uh, warrior clear out that camp. Not yet. I think I, I want to keep exploring. And actually, an archer is uh, powerful enough to clear out a barbarian camp in, over here. And I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to do that by showing off how ranged attacks work. So, archers are ranged units. They're not melee units like the, uh, like the warrior. So, the way an archer attacks is it uses this ranged attack ability here, which is the hotkey for it is B by default. If we click this... You can see there's a red outline. This shows the range at which I can shoot. Archers have a range of two. Now, you can see here I could reach one, two tiles away this way. Why can't I reach one, two tiles away this way? Well, the reason is this is a jungle on a hill. We can't see over it. Um, we're standing on a hill, which is helping. Normally, we would not be able to see this tile because this hill is in the way. But because we're standing on a hill ourselves, we can see uh, level to the hill so we can shoot fire over here. We can also see over this jungle. So we can see over this hill, over this jungle, which is why we can reach this barbarian here. But because this is a jungle hill, we can't see over that to fire on this tile over here. Just a little note to keep in mind. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a shot. There's a combat screen in the bottom left corner, which tells us how much damage we can expect to make, and also how much damage we can expect to take back. Now, because this is a ranged attack, we cannot be hit back, so it's going to be a completely one-sided attack. That's my favorite kind of attack. Uh, so, our strength, we have a ranged attack strength of 7. We furthermore, because of our difficulty, because we're playing on Chieftain difficulty, we have a 60% bonus versus Barbarians. Do you see that? So, 7 times 60% results in an effective strength of 11.2. On the flip side, you have the Brute. The Brute has a strength of 8. It's also on a jungle tile. Jungle and forests and hills give you a defensive bonus. If you're standing on it, you're much harder to hit. You're effectively stronger if you're being attacked. It doesn't apply if you're attacking from a hill or from a forest. It doesn't help you. But if you're being attacked while you're on rough terrain, you have better defense. So they're getting 25% boost from that. Furthermore, they're fortified right? That's that little shield. They're just standing in place and being all defensive. That gives an extra 40%. So their strength is effectively 13.2. They're effectively stronger than my archer, but it doesn't matter because it's a ranged attack. They can't hit me back. Pew! There we go. Meanwhile, we've got our warrior up north, which has finally reached this barbarian encampment. So let's compare there. If we mouse over, we can see that our effective strength is 12.8, which is the 8 regular strength of a warrior, plus our 60% bonus versus Barbarians, because we're playing on Chieftain difficulty. Uh, on the other side, you've got the Brute, which has, again, its base strength of 8. It's got a 40% fortification bonus, but it's on a flat land. It's on a plain. So it does not get a terrain improvement, which means our strength is relatively equal. Technically, we have a tiny edge. We're slightly stronger than they are, which means we'll inflict probably a bit more damage than we take back. All units in the game have... <coughs> excuse me. All units in the game have 100 hit points. So we're going to do approximately 32. It's, it's, it's semi-random. There's some rolls involved. But we can expect to do about 32 damage while receiving about 27 damage back. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, if they were to attack us back, we would not be fortified. So we wouldn't get a 40% defensive boost. But at least we're on a hill. So we get 25% boost from that. That's not so bad. Also note that ac attacking across a river is really bad because you're giving the defender a huge bonus there as well. Let's skip to the next turn. Oh! Theodora wants us to declare friendship. So, by making a declaration of friendship, we are we are telling the world that we're friends. Furthermore, um, there's a huge diplomatic penalty if one of us declares war on the other. 
If I were to declare war on Theodora while we have a friendship agreement, it would be a diplomatic black mark on across everyone in the game. Everyone would trust me far, far less. However, I don't plan on declaring war on her quite yet. Friendship agreements only last a certain amount of time, then they have to be renewed. I believe it's 30 turns on normal speed. I don't think I'm going to be attacking her within the next 30 turns, so I will say yes, let us work together. So that will improve our relationship. Uh, furthermore, it uh, enables certain types of um, more diplomatic actions. It will allow us to exchange gold directly, not just gold per turn. Uh, finally, or furthermore, it will also give us the ability to uh, sign research agreements, although for that we need, I think it's education, so we need a, a much further technology. Okay, this is bad. So I was going to say, things are not too bad. I can keep attacking this brute and probably keep getting to the edge and keep uh, defeating him. Furthermore, what's really interesting is if you do nothing on a turn, you will heal 10 hit points. Barbarians never heal. So what I can do is I could do I could attack it once and then just sit here on this hill, and so I've taken I'm at 69 hit points out of 100, so I'm down 31 hit points. Let's not make any jokes. So if I sat here for three turns, I'd basically be fully healed, whereas this barbarian would still be injured. Your combat strength goes down when you take damage. So then I would be attacking from an even bigger advantage, and it'd be easy, easily able to clear it. The problem is, some archers just appeared. Now archers can attack me without taking any damage back. So um, they're free to take pot shots at me every turn while I sit here and try to heal. So I'm never going to make any progress. Um, I could attack them. If I look at the odds, I would do a lot of damage. I would do... Um, wow, I, yeah, I would, I would hit them for about 48. I'd, I'd hit them for about half their maximum hit points. And the reason for that is ranged units like archers have really poor melee strength you can see the archer has a seven ranged attack but only a four melee strength so it's really easy to beat these guys up despite the fact that they're on a hill and um and i'm going to take a 20 percent strength penalty because i'm attacking over a river so i don't know i could attack them the problem is if i do that i will take some damage in return and this barbarian here this brute might actually wake up and decide to actually attack me in return the other thing i could do is i could just run away and try to heal in safety that's the safe thing to do i'm gonna go ahead and do the safe thing i'm just gonna run away try to heal up and come back uh we've got this archer here oh this camp also spawned out a brute but uh, we should still be okay. I'm going to go ahead and start dealing damage to this brute. The one that's in the camp should stay there. But this other brute will walk around and may try to attack me. So I'm going to try to inflict some damage and soften it up as quickly as possible. So finally some combat in this game. The other thing you may have noticed is a little bit of an XP pop-up. Every time you participate in battle, you get experience points. In melee combat, you get 5 XP, and in ranged combat, you get 2 XP. We've got our masonry, we'll talk about that in a second. There's an experience point bar over here. You can see this archer is shot twice now, getting 2 experience every time, so it's now a 4 of 10. When it reaches 10, it will be promoted, at which point it will get a special ability, so we're going to look into that soon. This brute has moved uh, forward over here. Now, if I was a normal archer, I would um, I would be a little bit stuck here because you need movement points to be able to shoot. You need movement points to be able to attack. So if I wanted to be able to move back, because remember, I only have a five range or melee strength here. I'm pretty squishy. Um, so if I want to move back, it would end my turn. And I do want to move back because I don't want to be meleeed by this brute. But because I'm the special scout archer, I can move back to here still have one movement point left, which means I can shoot. I can string this guy along like uh, he's a kite on a string, and um, I, I'll never get hit because of the rough terrain. I can move back by one. It'll cost him both his movement to enter these hills, so he won't be able to attack me back, which is great. This warrior over here, on the other hand, has been pursued by this archer, and I don't like that. Now, I could turn around at this point and attack him. I'm no longer going across the river, and I don't have to worry about the brute that's on that camp coming after me. So I think I like that plan now. I'll inflict quite a bit more damage because I'm not getting the 20% penalty from crossing a river, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Yeah, the archer will be able to shoot me on his turn and take a, inflict a little bit of damage with impunity, but he'll be so low I can probably finish him on mine, and if not, I can still try to run away. I could choose more research right now, and there's definitely a few great options. I could take bronze working to see if there's any iron, 
nearby. That's pretty valuable. I could take sailing and finally start to improve these pearls, which is pretty good. I could research archery so I could build an archer. But I got an archer for free, although Brazil's over here with a spearman. It's probably a good idea to grab um, archery at this point, just so that I can build one archer just in case something weird happens. Although, again, we're playing on Chieftain, which means it's probably safe, but I'm going to feel better if I do that. See that Levent over here has grabbed uh, King Solomon Vine, which means, uh, barring a few tricks with great generals, we'll not be able to take that for ourselves, but that's okay. Kind of as expected. Go next turn. I'm going to finish this worker over here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start on the settler. Especially if uh, we can keep these barbarians under control. We're going to hit this archer. I'm using the B key to shoot him. And hopefully finish him off. Indeed we did. Meanwhile, my, war my warrior is over here. Now, our warrior has now gained enough experience points to get a promotion. So there's three options available to me. One of the things that will always be there is the ability to heal instantly. You can spend your promotion to just heal up by 50 hit points. And sometimes you're going to want to do this to save a unit. But generally you want to avoid doing that because that consumes your entire promotion. So instead of getting a permanent bonus, you just healed up a little bit. The other thing we could do is grab Drill level 1 or Shock level 1. These are basically the same thing. They both give me a plus 15% combat strength, but one is for rough terrain and another is for open terrain. So if I'm standing in a forest and someone attacks me while I have Drill, I'm going to be 15% stronger. Also, this gives me a bonus when I'm attacking into it. So if I take Drill 1, which is the rough terrain, and I mouse over the archer, you can see that I get a rough terrain attack bonus of 15%, which is going to help me do more damage to this archer. In fact, the game predicts that it will be a decisive victory and I will kill the archer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll take a little bit of damage, but I should still be healthy enough that this brute, even if he does decide to wake up and attack me, I don't think he'll be able to kill me while I'm on a hill, especially since I do have drill one. I might be wrong, but I think I'm okay. Anyway, let me skip to the next turn over here. See if this brute decides to do anything, and he did not. Meanwhile, I'm going to take this archer, move him forward, and renew my assault on the barbarian encampment over here. We're going to get some more experience points, and we'll eventually level up our archer. Okay, we finished our first worker. So now what we want to do is we want to move him to a tile that we'll want to build an improvement on. And you can see this little white thing over here. The game is recommending I construct a pasture on the horses. And I agree, that would normally be very, very good. But we, of course, want to prioritize quarries on the stone. So I'm going to move to a quarry. And then I get a list of actions that the settler can do. On this tile, the things that would be legal would be a fort. I could build a fort here, although um, I don't have the technology for it. I could build a road on this tile, although again, I don't have the technology for it. I need wheel. Or I could build a quarry, and clearly that's what I want. The quarry will give plus one production, and will also give me plus two faith because of my pantheon. Remember, I have the sacred circles. Meanwhile, this warrior over here, I... I'm not going to attack here. I'm way too weak. It would leave me with, if I attacked, I may not die, but I'd be left with a fraction of a sliver of a hit point. So that's no good. So what I want to do is heal. Now, you can heal simply by doing nothing on a turn. So I still have full movement. I haven't acted. So if I did nothing, if I just hit a uh, space bar or this key, do nothing, I would do nothing. And then I would automatically heal 10 hit points. But I wouldn't be fortified. If I'm just standing here, why don't I just fortify? That also takes no movement. So you can fortify and heal. So if I fortified, I would get a big 40% defensive boost in case a barbarian decided to attack me. There's also this really handy button here, which is fortify until healed. So this unit will be fortified and will just be asleep until he's fully healed, at which point he'll wake up and prompt me for an action. So that's pretty convenient. Meanwhile, London needs an action. So the, you'll notice there's a new category down here, Wonders. Because of our technology, because of masonry, we have gained the ability to build a, our first world wonder, which would be the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Wonders take quite a long time to build. You can see both buildings here would only take 11 turns each. The wonder would take 27 turns, more than twice as long to build. But they tend to give you pretty good rewards. This would give me a little bit of culture and great merchant points. We'll talk about great people later on. But also, every time I use up a great person, I would get 100 gold, which is quite a bit. And each source of marble or stone worked by this city produces plus two gold. Well, I have two sources of stone. So that would effectively mean that this building would, would basically be producing four gold per turn for me. Plus the culture, plus the great merchant stuff. That's pretty cool. 
I'm not going to rush this wonder though, because again, they take a long time and I would much rather get a second city up and running before I build a wonder. So I'm going to go ahead and start on a settler right now. You'll notice right now I'm three turns away from having London grow to size five. If I start the settler, that will freeze. Cities do not grow while they're building a settler. Often you'll want to time it so you start building a settler right after a city grows. In this case, we're going to leave it be. It's going to be perfectly fine. Settlers are very vulnerable. They have no strength whatsoever in combat, so they can easily be uh, defeated in battle by basically any unit. And worse than just being straight out destroyed, uh, the enemy will actually steal the worker, or the, the settler or the worker, if they decide to move a military unit on there. So you generally want to escort them. So, but we're clearing out this area, clearing it from barbarians. Um, we're not at war with Brazil, so it's unlikely that they'll actually kill me. We've got a unit promotion for our archer. We've got barrage and accuracy. This is effectively the same as drill and shock that melee units get. I'm going to go ahead and grab barrage, which will give me a bonus when I'm attacking units in rough terrain. What this does not do is give me a, a bonus to my defense in this terrain. So it's a little bit more limited. But I'm going to grab barrage um, just because the logic is I usually have units in rough terrain are harder to kill. So I would like to counter that with barrage. But usually I'll go for a mix, a little bit of barrage, a little bit of accuracy, um, not on the same unit. You want to make one person who's all barrage and another one who's all accuracy, and you can sort of use them more tactfully. Anyway, let's keep blowing up this, uh, this barbarian over here and see if we can clear out that camp. Next turn. This Brazilian spearman may actually decide to uh, attack that camp. The one to the north, I mean. This will finish this brute off. This camp is still there, though, which means a new unit can still appear on this camp until we clear it. Um, yeah, this bar this spearman may decide to attack this camp. No, he decided not to this time around. Which suits me fine. We've researched archery just in case, which gives us the ability to build an archer, but also the Temple of Artemis, which is a great world wonder. Very, very, very strong. All right, so this camp has no barbarian in it, so I'm going to walk my uh, archer directly in there which clears the camp and is giving me 40 gold. I thought it was 25, but it's 40 gold we get from clearing out that barbarian encampment. So that's the advantage of doing that. We get to choose a new technology. Um, I think we're long overdue to research writing uh, because I would like to be able to build a library, for example. So I'm going to start on writing, but uh, sailing and bronze working are still very, very high priorities as well. Uh, here's a risk. This barbarian brute has two movement. He could walk in here and steal our um, our worker. So I'm actually going to move my worker. I'm going to move it to this um, stone instead. So the progress we made on the quarry has not gone away. You can still see it on the map, but uh, it's, we're going to leave it unfinished just to make sure we don't lose our brute or our worker to a brute. Yeah, he's going to buzz around there and be a bit of an issue. Uh, scout a little bit further south of the archer, but I really need, need to bring him home. You'll notice we got a pop-up here that London can attack a nearby enemy. Because this brute is within two tiles of London, I can shoot it. Just like my archer, the city can fire. Because there's some archers sort of in the city itself. So we'll be able to kill this uh, barbarian if he hangs around here. Uh, just with our city alone. Which is quite nice. We're going to start on our quarry in the north here. We've got a warrior nearby. Hopefully, nothing will pop out of this barbarian encampment and threaten that war worker. Ah, Pedro wants friendship. Yes! Let's do that. In fact, that makes me very happy because you had a spearman buzzing around. I'm, I don't want to lose my settler to a spearman. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring my archer north right now. Even though there's more tiles to explore, I really would feel a lot better. So I'll move you I'll move you to around here and then we'll figure out what to do next. We can get a new policy. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and grab the first level of honor. So I get a combat bonus, a bigger combat bonus against barbarians and I'll get culture from killing them. So that sounds pretty solid. So let's go ahead and do that. It'll help us to defeat this guy here. In fact, I'm going to wake up my warrior a little early. He's almost fully healed. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of our new bonus. We're now I've got a 93% bonus against barbarians. So I'm going to go ahead and smash this guy down right over here. So we'll almost kill him, and we might be able to kill him next time. Uh, I think we'll need another round of attack, actually. Oh, barbarian's not coming close to our city. Uh, we'll almost, but not quite kill him here. Hopefully Pedro doesn't come and steal the Barbarian encampment. A, I want to kill the Barbarian because I'm going to get culture. Because I've got the honor opening, I'm going to get bonus culture from killing this Barbarian. And also, I want to clear the camp and take the money. Speaking of money, can I buy an archer in London? Oh, that is really unfortunate. Let's see here. 
Yeah, an archer is 200 gold. I would like to buy an archer in London. So I can use a little bit of extra muscle over here in the north. So once again, I have to decide what I'm going to do with this warrior here. I could just heal him in place, but then the archer will just shoot me. I could run away and try to heal there. Or I could attack the archer. And wow. I could almost kill it in one shot. I could also go and kill this war this uh, brute, clear out the camp. The problem is I would take a little bit of damage from that, and then the archer would be able to shoot me. I would feel much better if I started to apply some damage to the archer. Killed off most of them, which would weaken them. I got really lucky. I might have killed them in one turn, but not quite. I only took 6 points of damage while inflicted 91. That's not bad. He will probably shoot me, but he's so weak he'll do hardly anything to me at all. 7 points of damage. And I get my second promotion. Once again, I could take the, in the instant heal, but I'm going to try to avoid doing that. I could take Amphibious, which lets you not take a penalty for attacking across a river or from the sea, but that's almost never worth taking. Cover is actually quite nice. It's a pretty big defensive bonus against range attacks, which includes cities. Very cool. And later on, uh, airplanes as well. I can take Medic, which allows adjacent units to heal more. That's not bad to have in a big structure. Or I could just go to level 2 Drill, um, which is always relatively strong. Um... I think I'm going to go ahead and take level 2 drill at this point, but cover is very, very tempting. I'll go ahead and take that. Meanwhile, I will finish off the archer, so he can't just keep shooting me. There's the uh, Brazilian Spearman. He will not be able to steal my camp. <laughs> steal. Um, because, um, my, well, A, he's too many tiles away, and B, I'm, I'm in the way as well. I don't think my archer needs to go north to help out at this camp anymore. They just spawned a unit, so it won't for another while. And I'll be able to clear this out on my own. So I'm going to move this archer to the south and see if I can't spot that brute anywhere. Went on the hill for extra vision. Hmm, I don't know where he's gone. He might be harassing La Venta. And yes, everyone is friendly. She's just acknowledging that all three of us on this island are now friends, which is great. Same thing that way. And everyone is quite happy. Let me check my diplomacy over here to see if my city-states have any missions. And they do! And you can see, uh, if you clicked on them, like Brussels over here, I can see they want me to destroy a nearby barbarian encampment. And if I click here, it'll actually center on the encampment. Well, that's the one I'm working on. So if I do that, I will get influence with Brussels. You'll see that they're also not mad at me anymore. They're sitting at the, the five influence because I'm protecting them. They also would like a trade route. Well, I might do that. Um, Buenos Aires wants culture and also to just kill some barbarians near them. And Laventa wants faith and also to kill some barbarians near them. So here's here's what's going to be awesome. So Brussels, I'm at 5 of 30, and they have a mission for me to destroy this encampment. So I will be able to do that, just barely. I'll have hardly any hit points left over, but I'll be able to do that. So I'll kill this. I'll get culture from killing a barbarian because of my honor opening. I'll get some experience points for combat. I'll get money for clearing that out. And I cleared the encampment for Brussels, which gave me 50 influence over them, which means that we are now friends. And because we're friends, they are now giving me some culture per turn. If I mouse over here, I can see I'm getting three culture per turn from city-states. That's that's a 50% boost. I was making six. So an extra three there is a 50% boost to my culture because I'm friends with Brussels. And I'm actually just on the verge of becoming allied with them. And you only need five more for that, if I uh, remember correctly. Yeah, five more to become allied. Um, in which case, I believe they would give me more culture, not to mention access to furs, which is pretty damn nice. So... That was a very productive little action over there. I'm going to move south. Ah, there he is. That's probably the Barbarian Lavento wants me to kill. Um, I'm going to go ahead and step up one more. The Brute could, you know, cause a little bit of damage to my archer, but I think ultimately we'll be okay. Oh, he moved into the marsh. That's actually a really bad move because the marsh, while forests and hills and all this give you a bonus to combat, the marsh actually gives you a penalty. You can see there's a minus 15% strength because he's standing in the marsh. So I'm going to go ahead and just shoot him and kill him. Take the... Oh, I didn't kill him. You see, it was predicting that I would, but my roll, my damage roll, was just slightly too low, so I didn't. Meanwhile, this, uh, my warrior over here is highly damaged and needs to heal. I could heal where I am. I could heal within my borders, which will actually allow me to heal faster. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move on to this, um, copper tile. This is a hill. It will give me more vision, so I can see enemies coming. Also, it's going to be slightly more defensive, and I will just fortify until healed there. I'm mostly, and same thing with this archer, I mostly want to keep an eye open over here, because I think that's where I'm going to settle. Kills reason itself. We finished writing, so we can finally build a library, which would be quite nice. Um, 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this archer. I'll move him a little closer. We finished our first uh, quarry. Now, if we check London... Okay, good. London is working that tile. And in fact, I want to make sure that we're always working it. So I'm going to lock that tile. I want to tell the city governor, no matter what happens, always work this tile. I want that faith. I want to found a religion. Our workers should probably go back to the other quarry now. We're going to do that. And yeah, we've got our first settler. Now, these little icons here are the game's recommendation of tiles that might be a good place to build. And yeah, that would be fine, but I don't think that's a high priority site. And, and it only shows you tiles within a certain range. So just because it's recommending here, it doesn't mean there's not a good city site over here. In fact, there definitely is a good city site over here. Uh, it's going to be relatively difficult picking exactly where we're going to want to settle. Because here's the thing. Settling next to a mountain allows you to build observatories later on which is really good because that gives you 50% bonus science. That's beautiful. Settling next to a river gives you more trade. Uh, we could settle here, which would have both the mountain and the river. The problem is I also have a lot of tundra tiles, which aren't worth much. Although the marble here is fine. I'm really tempted to settle right here. If I do that, we'd actually eventually reach far enough down to grab the cattle, um, the marble, the wheat... Uh, these horses, which London can't actually work, I think this is a pretty good site. There, there's argument to be made a lot of, about a lot of things, but that's going to be fine. I'm going to move the settler in that direction. And my archer has already moved. My warrior here, I'm going to tell it to fortify until healed. So it's spotting to make sure there's no barbarians around that will steal my settler, for example. London need, needs new production. I am very tempted to just build a library, but hey, let's do something cool. Actually, hmm. So I was going to say, let's do something cool. Let's build the Great Library, which is a world wonder. The Great Library takes a little more than twice as long to build as a library. But two things. One, okay, well, lots of things. First of all, it gives you a free library in the city. So right away, you can sort of deduct the nine turns of the library here. So effectively, the Great Library is almost as if it was only taking 16 turns to build. Well, that's pretty cool. It also gives you a free technology. That's amazing. Gives you slots for great works of writing, which is really good, but we'll talk about that later. It also gives us one culture per turn and three science per turn for free and great scientist points. The great library is very, very good. High difficulty, it's, it'll be very difficult to get it. Also, we didn't get writing early on. Here's the problem. Let's review the tech tree. We could have started, we started with agriculture. We could have gone pottery into writing and then started the great library right away. What if one, but we didn't. We grabbed all these other technologies. What if one of our AI opponents went pottery writing, and has been working on the Great Library. Only one person in the world can build a world wonder. We could start building the Great Library and then get beaten to it before we complete. Because we didn't beeline the Great Library, it would be a very, 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 very bad idea for us to start working on it. However, this is chieftain difficulty, and I'm willing to bet we can pull it off. Don't Normally, this is a bad idea. We've delayed it too long. We're probably going to be able to finish it, and I want to show off what it looks like, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We still need to pick another technology. I think it's high time for us to pick, um, well, if we're going to be producing a great library, we clearly can't be building fishing boats, so we don't need sailing yet for our clams. So let's go ahead and grab the calendar so that we can improve our silk at least and get a luxury resource going. Let's go and finally kill this brute. Again, we get a little bit of bonus culture from being able to do that because of our honor opener. Eight culture. You get a number of culture equal to its combat strength. And with that, this video will have to come to an end. Again, this great library production is probably a really, really, really bad idea. But uh, maybe we'll get lucky. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.